it's a really good thing for the public to see, to interact directly with artists, to get to meet them, to see how they work, to see the processes, what they think about, um, even how they construct things. So it's a really great behind the scenes kind of process which allows a very different view for our audience, so that's one part. Second, it's really useful for the artists because it gets them out of the studio, gets them interacting with each other, uh, getting to meet the public, getting to hear different opinions about the work. Um, thirdly, uh, the museum has a mission to promote activities and events and exhibitions which try to be more artist-centric and to feature the artists themselves and what they do more clearly. And we want the museum to move increasingly towards a system like a Kunsthalle in Germany, which gives precedence to the kind of artist-led projects and things that might enable the museum to fulfil our mission in ways that other museums cannot. And so having artists come into the museum and act as if it's a studio is something that the bigger museums in Los Angeles can't do, but we can. And, and we think it's a really interesting experience for everyone involved. And so engaging our system, our um, schedule, is important that we try and bring in these, these new kinds of uh, exhibitions. The premise of the work at its core is about authority, the authority of images, the authority of objects and ideas in our life, and the rules that we live with visually and how that manifests itself in society. For the piece here, I use two photographic uh, devices. The first was the original was a time-lapse photograph of a missile leaving a silo. It was three images that took place in a half a second in reality, maybe less. And uh, I spent many weeks kind of recreating this time event, this durational event. And that was one idea about time and about how it uh, relates to photography and how drawing relates to photography and the labor and time that drawing takes in relationship to photography and other media. There's labor involved. It's an hourly kind of grind against the surface. The large piece of the missile uh, silhouettes talk about how visual iconography and culture, in a way, the simpler things get, the less meaning they have. It's a wonderful thing to pare something down to its essential nature, and abstraction has been about that and comes out of that for a very long time. But the flip side is, when you take something down to its bare minimum, it loses meaning, it loses literal meaning. And uh, in the case of missiles, they become less deadly looking, they become more graphically interesting kind of illustrations. These are anonymous silhouettes that were done in a book about missiles that I found uh, discarded from a library. 1959, all the missiles and rockets of the US the nuclear arsenal. Many years ago, I, I appreciate people who can tell good stories, and I found as a young person I could communicate better with images than words, and I, I like storytelling, I like communicating in that way, <laughs> and I also learned as a young person that I enjoyed the action of making things. It's, it gave me access to a world that I like, and I have always wanted to make things. As an older person, I understand there are some things I like that I want to share. I like things that are beautiful and dangerous, like um, animals, um, certain characteristics in people and animals that are a little bit edgy. I like to uh, convey this, these qualities in, in images. It's, yes, it's my language. <laughs> Less intellectual and more emotional, my work. I can, it continues to grow. I continue to uh, discover new reasons for 
using modern dress. I'm doing my own work. 画的草图，嗯，是我最初的这个构想，嗯，也是最初的方案，嗯，那么一点也没有偏离方案。那么这个方案是什么呢？我就要建一个 shuttle， 嗯 b u i l d i n g shuttle， 嗯 ，refuge， refuge， 嗯，那么，呃，来到这儿呢，我选择了这个材料，这个草。第一，首先就是割草，然后，呃，又选择这个草度啊、嗯。我觉得只有这样的东西，好像更能呈现我要说的嗯。嗯，那么背后的意义呢，就是这一个月来就不断的去建立和破坏，嗯，建立和摧毁，嗯，最后再建立，那就是这样的过程，嗯，从。Building house, building wall, 啊，一直叫巴别塔、椅子，还有这个乐园，是吧？整个都是在这一个月建立起来。嗯，那么这个过程呢，也是让我思考，也是痛苦的过程。嗯，就传递这样的一个理念。I think it's something that changes a lot, but right now my purpose in my work is I've been working with bodybuilders and I want to create um, create landscapes of their bodies to where it looks like mountains. So mountains and the bodybuilders both are these symbols of strength. So I'm interested in strength in my work and then also in contrasting my own size with the size of a bodybuilder, which is much bigger. Um, and I've been performing with them trying to lift them and create these interactions with them. Um, yeah, and I think in general my work tends to like deal with the body and I tend to be in my work. So, that's all. <laughs> My purpose on my work, a good question. Um, I would say when I do my work, my only intention is to not have an intention. And through my work, in the process, I'm processing, exploring what we might call the unconscious, and which works, I'm a psychologist and an artist. And in my art practice, I kind of process the unconscious and then informs me to be a better psychologist and then working with others in psychology helps inform my art practice. I was trained as a painter and I practiced calligraphy, writing ancient poetry when I was growing up. So the aesthetic of the, my work had a lot to do with calligraphy and line. When I was in graduate school, I decided to experiment with materials. So I took two-dimensional elements and make it into three-dimensional and try to contract with all different kinds of material. Like this is a tape and this is the electrical wire. I use a lot of electrical wires in my work. I crochet them together like a piece of fabric and then I shape it in a way into structure and insulation. The use of electrical wire is kind of related to years ago, somebody gave me a lot of electrical wire because they see the linear uh, quality in my work. And all this wire just sent my studio for a year. One day I started taking it apart and I used the copper and crochet a whole different body of work. And one day it hit me, I started to discover a political wire.
provider is the conduit. And so uh, we, human being are conduit, we emulate that power of trying to better our life. So that's really fascinating to me. Hello, hi. My name is Hagop Nigerian. I'm a college professor and working artist. Um, I did come from Beirut, Lebanon in 1969 to America. Uh, my family immigrated. My father was a construction worker, uh, built things with hands, so I think watching him make me want to paint. I've been painting a long time, uh, and I play music. I make a lot of music and recordings, so for years I painted people, realistic images, and uh, the last five or ten years I'm painting abstractly with the idea of taking color and translating it into music, so I might listen to classical music or jazz, and uh, depending on the speed, the sound, uh, the texture of the songs, I try to make the colors sort of react to that, so sometimes they're very fast and energetic. Um, you know, a lot of layers, like you think of instruments playing together, some behind, some in front, so you, know, you have a lot of layers, you have then sounds that break the surface like the zigzags there um, the meaning I you know the meaning is probably joy or happiness in uh, human feelings and also emotion or you know sometimes energy from things we live in everyday life to make paintings as enjoyable you know because as most people the world is difficult to see and I don't consider I could do political paintings, I would not feel honest, but uh, making paintings about things I enjoy and I think other people do with music is uh, a really gift, a gift for me, it seems, you know, sort of a happy way to live my life with uh, all the busyness. Because when I teach and work, I'm too much thinking about teaching and working. Now I can just concentrate on um, this, this museum experience that I'm joined with you all is uh, allowing me to just stay here a whole month and paint and you know work pretty quickly on different ideas. But the meaning of the work, I think, uh, is hopefully other people can enjoy the color and also the the, the light and the air in the work. And, uh, for me, it's an uh, exercise in learning how to learn new colors, learn about myself, learn about myself as an artist. Um, yeah and not worry too much about it. This month for me is just a lot of process, trying to get, make many, many things. I have a show in September, an exhibition, and I think I'll look at this work and decide you know, which ones were more successful. So I hope that answers the question. And thank you for asking me, and it's been wonderful watching you all work in your haystacks over here and create daily. So. Plus everything's changing every day. My space changes, your space is changing. You know, I think very exciting. Thank you. Michael. The purpose of my work, I would think, is to give something back to people here while I'm here, to invite the viewer to be part of the work, to include people in the journey. Thank you, Jody. <laughs> You're very welcome. It doesn't have a lot of purpose, but for me that's because um, I'm an atheist and I don't really have any beliefs. I don't believe in God or anything like that. So for me, I have my own, I make my own values and things. So it only has purpose because I give it meaning. And for me, it's a form of self-expression and I like things that have no rules as well. So it's nice to do something where you can do whatever you want. It's, just, it's a good uh, headspace, and I like to sort of do things so it feels like it's coming from the subconscious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like dreams, you know? Mm -hmm. um, things that are not rational. Yeah. And um, yeah, sometimes don't make sense. I like to, to go into that headspace when I can. Mm -hmm. Studio, like those studio systems, open my studio. 
open the door, let people easy to come in, sit down, talk to you. Uh, but I think the world is getting crazy. I think good communication is very important right now. So I want to make a like this student tea house. Uh, use very calm and peace way. Let's very simple like uh, calm down, let's talk. And then uh, during the 28 days, and uh, I have meet people like 91 people drink tea with me. It's very improved me. I feel very inside, very strong and strong. And uh, uh, good energy around me. So it's very encouraged me to continue to my do this project. This project will go from more city, two cities. Uh, no have two in the museum. I think I think it's better in the public place, like university. So next city I will go Boston. Everything that we do is about issues. A lot of them are politics. Um, Sometimes about religion, but in this case, it's more political. Yes, and the way that we do them is determined by the idea. So we work with a lot of different media, and we never know the media we work with until we know what we want to talk about. So this one is called Tiny Revolutions, very small revolutions. And we do one a day, and um, they make us feel better. We're not very happy with our government right now. So in the United States, you're allowed to say negative things about your government for now. But we aren't sure that that's going to be there forever. And that's why these are so small. So if, if someday we are not able to voice our opinions about things, we can hide those. This one is important. And that is a, a distress symbol for our country, turning your flag upside down. This is a Goya. You know the, the Goya part of me? Very tiny Goya. These are called, that's our schedule. <laughs> these are called letters to the children of the United States. And these are lessons in ethics. And morality. And we think that's important because right now our government isn't leading with ethics and morality. Absolutely nothing. I know. Yeah, I don't know much about China. Not quite. Not I'm not much. sure. Mm -hmm. It's hard to know. It's such a big place. I mean, how do I? I've never been. Mm -hmm. I've always wanted to go. Mm -hmm. That the people are wonderful and a little bit crazy, like you guys. <laughs> I was born in Taiwan, but when I came to the U.S., it was around '86. So I never really have a lot of chance to go to China. So I don't really know much about it. I know a lot about LA, and I know about New York, but I don't know other cities so well. Oh, you know, it's funny, I don't know very much at all. I have not been to China except Hong Kong, which is not quite the same, it's not the same, but I worked in Hong Kong in the 80s, when I was in the fashion industry. At that time, many of the garment uh, apparel factories for U.S. products were in Hong Kong. That was a long time ago because now our many of our products are made in China. Beijing Olympics was very impressive. Uh, how much do I know? Well, certainly I've read about the Cultural Revolution and uh, if you study the 60s and the sociology of the 60s, uh, Mao Zedong was always in the mix, even as an image, you know, in a Warhol. It was obviously a famous period that the world has studied. Now, what's gone after that is a little murkier. 
uh, the various, the last three or four leaders blend in for me a little bit. I remember thinking that it was a totalitarian capitalist wonderland in the cities and in the rural areas, just uh, like most countries, like our own country, you have a different level of interest in culture and a different level of, uh, well, it's agrarian, you're farming perhaps. Maybe, as it's been explained to me now, uh, they're like medieval fiefdoms where you have a very strong uh, sense of family, community, but also to be isolated at the same time.